Just two months remain of the season. Is anybody going to make a late move? Yes, welcome along to this week's Women's Football Chat. My name is Chris Gadsby. I'm here every Thursday at 6pm bringing you the very latest from the third and fourth tiers of women's football here in England. This is the show dedicated to the FAWNL and we've got plenty to talk about this week. We've got uh, two rounds of fixtures on the horizon with the final midweek uh, round of the season plus the weather didn't have too much of a hold over last Sunday's game so we've got plenty to talk about there as well but we're going to start with the news and rather helpfully the FAWNL last week at exactly 6 p.m on uh, last Thursday so at the exact same second that the show came out uh, for you to all enjoy the league announced that uh, the FAWNL Cup final held at Kenilworth Road will be on March the 23rd with a 2.30 kickoff. Um, so I'd like to personally thank everybody at the FAWNL who decided that that was the perfect time to announce uh, when the uh, Cup final was going to be so that I'd have to wait an entire week to get it into uh, the show and to let you know. Um, so thank you to the FAWNL for that. But yes, uh, tickets are on sale now. And uh, yeah, it's on March that March the 23rd at uh, at 2:30, obviously between uh, Newcastle United and hashtag uh, United. Um, so that's kind of the the cup final. We don't yet know about the plate, um, but as soon as uh, we do know about the plate, uh, then uh, we'll let you know. Uh, then we're going to move into Division One North. We're going to go to Barnsley. Um, because Barnsley Women's uh, FC are excited to announce uh, that uh, there is a new manager for uh, for Barnsley. Uh, Dan Hearn is the uh, is the new Barnsley manager. He has a wealth of experience at this level. He's managed at Leeds United and Sheffield United, um, and they would like to thank Lois Daniels for everything she's done for the club. They also want to uh, make it clear that um, Lois stepped down from her role as manager at the beginning of the year. Um, so which may go a little way to explaining um, the, the, the slump that uh, Barnsley had uh, over the start of uh, 2024, which has seen them go from the, from the top of the table uh, and just uh, slip to a few points uh, off the summit. Um, so that's from Barnsley. And then uh, if we cross the bridge and go into Wales... Uh, we have a uh, new name coming for the start of next season. At the beginning of the 24-25 season, Cardiff City Ladies will evolve into Gwalia United, uh, marking a new chapter for the only Welsh club in the English football system. Uh, and here I'd like to thank uh, Cardiff City Ladies for changing their name into a team that, yes, it has a Welsh name, but it's easy to pronounce. And it doesn't have a load of consonants in a random order. Um, so, taking on the name Gwale United, an ancient Welsh term for Wales, uh, it celebrates the cultural and historical identity alongside their commitment to the future of women's football, alongside aims to become the club side for Wales. Uh, the club have ambitions to reach the Women's Super League. This new era for Gwale United will see them uh, sponsored by comparison site go.compare in a three-year partnership which will begin at the start of the 24-25 season. Julian Jenkins, the co-owner of Cardiff City Ladies, uh, spoke of the announcement and said that today marks the start of a really exciting new chapter for women's club football in Wales. Gwali United is a testament to embracing our future while honouring our storied past. Since 1975, the club has been a pioneer of women's football, inspiring and uniting people through sport. And we will carry these values forward. Uh, and there's uh, the quote is... Uh, 
quite long. I'm not going to read uh, everything. Um, so the Cardiff City Ladies remains the club's name until the end of this season. And then they take on the new name at the start of the 24-25 season. As I said, when Go.Compare begin their sponsorship of the club. Under the banner of Our Club, Our Nation, Our Story, they will start next season's campaign pretty much um, without any doubt now in the Southern Premier Division. Uh, and Lee Griffin, the founder and CEO of Go.Compare, said that Go.Compare was born in Wales. Uh, so to be able to support the ambitions of Gwali United is something we're really excited about. The club has huge ambitions for its future and we're hopeful that our sponsorship will go some way to support those ambitions. So Cardiff, new name, new big sponsor coming in as well. Obviously they had that uh, huge investment uh, earlier on in the season as well. So big moves being made uh, in South Wales uh, for the 24-25 season. Be interesting to find out uh, what uh, they can do uh, next season but there is still two months of this season to go so let's jump back and focus on that for now uh, we'll start then as we always do when we're looking at results at the northern premier division uh, derby county nil burnley two uh, goals in this one for burnley uh, coming uh, both in the second half both in the final 20 minutes as well um, goals here to Amy Kelly off the substitutes bench in the 72nd minute and Abby Clark also off the bench in the 86th minute. Uh, Forest free Halifax nil. This is a game that was swapped um, and hosted at Grange Park. The Halifax pitch struggling at the moment. Uh, and this is a, is a common theme uh, because their game this weekend against Derby has also switched um, away from Halifax. So... Those were the two games when you look at the fixtures to go that they could do that. So now the games in April, which should have been in Forest and Derby, are now both going to be in Halifax. Um, but Forest winning by three goals to nil. Uh, again, late goals here. Luan Wersey, 73rd and 90th minute. Holly Manders in the 80th minute. So all three of Forest's goals coming in the final 20, but they take uh, a three nil victory. Big three points for West Bromwich Albion as well. 2-0 up at half-time away at Huddersfield Town. Um, but uh, despite Huddersfield pulling one back, there is nothing on full-time. West Brom haven't got their squad up. Fine. Uh, and Huddersfield's... I can let Huddersfield's go because I know it was a penalty and full-time doesn't like penalties and own goals coming up on the system. But goals for West Brom. Fran Norfolk Oxford in the 20th minute. And uh, a goal for Reville in the 42nd minute. So 2-0 up at half time. A penalty in the 90th minute to Bethany Ibbotson. The only goal for Huddersfield Town. Um, but they lose by two goals to one. That has big implications at the bottom of the Northern Premier Division, which we'll look at in a moment. Uh, somewhat unsurprisingly, uh, Newcastle United beating Stoke City by four goals to one. Uh, goals to Newcastle coming early on, really. Katie Barker, 11th minute. Georgia Gibson, 13th minute. Jasmine McQuaid, 14th minute. So 3 nil up after a quarter of an hour. Um, so did pull one back, Heidi Logan, in the 80th minute uh, with a goal for Stoke City. But then Bridget Galloway in the 86th minute restored that free goal advantage for Newcastle. And Wolves uh, beating Liverpool Feds by three goals to nil. Beth Merrick in the 15 minute. 15th minute, Destiny Toussaint in the 44th minute, so 2 0 at half time, and then Jade Cross in the 96th, rounding off the scoring. Uh, what that means for the Northern Premier Division table, not really a lot at the top. Forest, Newcastle, Burnley, all winning, um, so those gaps remain exactly the same. Liverpool Feds losing, so Wolves close the gap. On them, they are now just two points behind with three games in hand. You would expect that Wolves will jump them and finish fourth. Um, and then the top four in the Northern Premier Division were the top four that we were expecting at the start of the season. Um, Derby obviously after losing to uh, Burnley drop a place down to sixth. The big move is towards the bottom. West Bromwich Albion up two places with their victory over Huddersfield Town. And the reason that this is significant is that it's meant that the gap between Huddersfield and safety has gone from 13 points to um, 
sorry, it's the, it's because West Brom were on 13. It's gone from seven points to nine points, which means obviously it's three wins now for Huddersfield that they need. Their goal difference with three wins would probably take them above Stourbridge, so it is probably just three wins rather than three wins and a draw. Um, but it just makes it all the more daunting um, now for Huddersfield. AFC filed. They now need uh, 12 points, probably 13 because of the goal difference, in order to get themselves out of the Northern Premier Division. And you look at the games that these two sides have got left to play, um, you know, particularly Huddersfield Town who, yes, have got a couple of teams down towards the bottom, but between now and the end of the season, it's Liverpool Feds, it's two against Forest, it's Burnley, Wolves, Newcastle. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six of the remaining nine games are against the current top five in the Northern Premier Division. Um, So you're left with having to win all three of the other games and then hoping that uh, other results go your way to enable you to get out of the uh, relegation zone. So I do maintain, as I've said for a couple of weeks now, I think the Northern Premier Division is done. I can't see Newcastle dropping enough points, and I can't see Huddersfield or Fylde getting enough points to get themselves out of trouble there. Um, Right, let's have a look at the Southern Premier Division. Only two games here. Um, Cardiff City leading uh, right down to the final few moments at home to Portsmouth. Uh, They opened the scoring in the 65th minute uh, through Ellie Sargent. Uh, Portsmouth then two late goals. Emma Jones, 85th and the 87th minute, turned it around uh, for the South Coast side. And uh, they end up with the three points. Elsewhere, Plymouth 1, Ipswich Town 3. Again, kind of unsurprising here given their position in the league tables. Uh, Ipswich Town taking the lead for Natasha Thomas in the 13th minute. Georgie not getting the equaliser for Plymouth a minute later. Uh, But uh, Liana Gunning-Williams in the first minute of added time at the end of the first half. Putting Ipswich back in front. And then Sophie Peskett. Uh, 10 minutes into the second half made it 3-1 to Ipswich not a great amount of movement then in the Southern Premier Division with only two games going on so Portsmouth uh, have now played one more than Hashtag United but that gap is nine points now and with a vastly better goal difference as well again as I said similar to the North I can't see Portsmouth throwing that one away now Um, so I think Hashtag United wants silverware they're going to have to beat Newcastle in the uh, cup final Uh, so Cardiff in seventh they remain 14 points clear of the bottom two the only other game Ipswich Town with their three points go into fourth above Oxford United of course they are way too far back um, from Portsmouth to mount anything in the way of a challenge just for reference there if Ipswich Town were to win their remaining seven games they would get to 50 points which means that uh, Portsmouth need what, two wins from their final six to mean Ipswich can't get the title. Um, so, you know, it really is, it's hashtag if they can uh, somehow, uh, you know, win all of their games and Portsmouth drop a significant amount. Uh, Plymouth Argyle, they lost as well then, so they remain 11 points clear of the bottom two. Again, six games to go. You're looking at needing 11 points, you know, and and. 13, 14 points uh, for those bottom two sides to get themselves out of trouble. So I just cannot see it happening. Um, Right, Division 1 Midlands then. Three games to discuss uh, here. One postponed between Sheffield and Northampton. Sheffield, a lot of games uh, left to go. There are still, um, you probably probably won't be able to see it on the board here, Um, plenty of games still to schedule across the FAWNL from these postponements. Um, So I've made little marks against each team. Um, to see which games they've got left uh, to schedule in. Um, Now, there are three weekends coming up. Uh, The 14th of April, not many teams are in action. And the 28th of April, not many teams are in action. There is plenty of space to get these games scheduled in and played. Um, But Leafield Athletic against Notts County. Leafield denied by a very late winner. 
um, in this one. Um, so they took the lead early on, sixth minute uh, through Alicia Miller, and then uh, Karis slowly in the 31st minute had put them back in front uh, after Takir Burnett in the 23rd minute had equalised for Notts County. But then they still couldn't go in at half-time in front uh, because Nicola Emery in the 39th minute made it 2-2. Uh, then Leafle Athletic in front again, Catherine Pagan, 61st minutes. The third time that uh, Leafle Athletic take the lead in this game. They thought they had it, uh, but Shaniqua Barnes in the 99th minute equalising for Notts County. And how important of a point could that prove to be? Loughborough Lightning, Bolmere St. Michael's drawing 0-0. That was that game that was obviously postponed um, a few weeks ago. As I've said, Sheffield against Northampton off. And Sporting Cows are getting a valuable three points to get their season back on track um, with an away win against Lincoln City. They did go behind Madison Green in the 26th minute, but two second half goals, Olivia Stubbs in the 56th and Ania Denham in the 72nd, meant that Sporting take all three points. And what that means is they have Close the gap up to the top two once again. Uh, there are no movements in the um, Division 1 Midlands. Loughborough Lightning, Boldmere and Michaels obviously sharing the points. They stay in the top two. Sporting Cows are, though, moved to within two points of the top of the table. And they've got a game in hand over Boldmere St. Michaels. And they also have the best goal difference by quite some way um, of the teams towards the top. Uh, other where uh, elsewhere where there were results then so Lincoln City obviously losing to um, Sporting Cows are down towards the bottom then Leafield Athletic and Notts County uh, sharing the points as well Leafield Athletic there you go that 99th minute goal for Notts County was the difference between Leafield Athletic being on 10 points Notts County on 9 and Leafield Athletic being out of the relegation zone and everything staying as it was um, so it's uh, very close still towards the bottom. It still feels like anybody Lincoln City and down. Lincoln are only six points clear of the of the bottom two. Any one of those bottom five or any two of those bottom five could be the ones that end up uh, in tier five next season. And it still feels as though any one of the current top four could be the ones that find themselves in the Northern Premier Division. Um, so Division One Midlands very open um, at the moment. Um, Right, Division 1 North results then. Five to talk about here. So plenty um, to delve into. Most of the division in action. Chester Street Town losing by three goals to one to Hull City. Uh, goals for Hull City. Even though Chester Street Town, they took the lead in this one uh, through Laura Hockaday in the 45th minute, but they couldn't get into half time uh, with the lead intact. Uh, Helen Linsky in the 45 plus two equalising for Hull City and then taking the lead very early on in the second half through Chloe Copsey uh, in the 47th. Ellie Tanser then in the 56th rounding off the scoring for Hull. Barnsley, their difficult 2024 continues. A 1-0 loss away at Doncaster Rovers' Bells. Ariane Parnham in the 48th minute with the only goal in that one. Uh, Durham Sestra, a late scare for them, but they hold on. Uh, goals here. Uh, they did fall behind Katie Astle in the 22nd minute for Leeds. Uh, that only lasted four minutes before Jordan Atkinson equalised for Durham. They then took the lead. Victoria Newfiend in the 38th minute made it 2-1. Uh, they then went 3-1 in front with just three minutes to go. Leanna Giles in the 87th minute. And they probably thought that it was done at that point. Uh, but Leeds didn't back down. Izzy Elliott in the 92nd minute pulled one back. Probably made for a very nervous conclusion to that game. But it is Durham Sestra that hold on for all three points. Norton Stockton Ancients 3, FC United of Manchester 2. Early goals and late goals in this one. FC United of Manchester so close to what would be a huge three points for them. Uh, but Bianca Owens in the third minute had put Norton Stockton Ancients in front. Then for FC United of Manchester, Ritchie in the eighth minute equalised. They then took the lead just before the half hour mark uh, through Reeves. And they were holding on to a 2-1 lead until stoppage time at the end of the game. 
Cara Milne Redhead, 90 plus 3, takes SC United and Manchester from 3 points down to 1 point. And then Sophie White in the 96th minute takes them from 1 point to nothing. Two stoppage time goals for Norton Stockton Ancient. So cruel against FC United of Manchester, but a valuable 3 points for Norton. Uh, and Chorley convincing winners against York City. Uh, couple of braces in this one. Um, so Laura Walker from the penalty spot in the 20th minute. Then Charlotte Tyres in the 45th and the 57th minute. Uh, Fitzpatrick, Millie Fitzpatrick in the 78th and the 81st. And uh, Megan Parker in the 94th. York City's only goal coming to Jess Holder in the 69th minute. Uh, that was to make it 3-1. But then Chorley kicked on and uh, eventually won by six goals to one. Uh, what that means for the table then, with Barnsley losing again, Durham, Sestra and Hull City both winning. They go up a place each um, to second and third respectively. Barnsley dropped down to fourth, but they are still with a game in hand over Middlesbrough and Durham, Sestra and a goal difference that's pretty even as well. In with a shout of going up from Division 1 North. But Hull are only two points off the top of the table and they have three games in hand. They have the opportunity to stretch themselves into a six, seven point lead, um, which at this late stage in the season would almost be insurmountable. Um, down then towards the bottom, Chester Street Town losing, York City losing, Chorley, big three points for them. They're now seven clear of the relegation zone. FC United, Manchester five from safety. Uh, obviously, they were denied by Norton and Stockton Ancients, who themselves have lifted themselves to eight points away from the drop. Uh, so that's three wins now that York City need in order to catch Norton and Stockton Ancients. It's uh, been a weekend, really, of kind of stretching that gap, um, particularly for Norton and Stockton Ancients, Chorley and Doncaster Rovers Bells as well, winning. Um, so plenty of sides in the bottom half of the table winning and just pulling themselves away from those bottom two and making life all the more difficult for them. Southeast results, just one to talk about. Both games at the weekend were postponed, uh, but there was one game uh, on Tuesday night, Actonian 6, Chesham United 2. Um, goals in this one coming a uh, hat-trick for Tory St. Clair in the 8th, the 50th and the 64th minute uh, Rochelle Shakes in the 15th and the 88th and Molly O'Reilly in the 55th with the scoring for Actonians. Uh, now a goal for Mikowska in the 41st minute for Chesham United and then a goal in the 55th minute that Chesham's Lineup isn't on full time and neither club said who it was um, on social media. So, But it was a 6-2 uh, win for Actonians. That's the only game that's happened in South East. It means there's no movement. Actonians go from 20 points and in 7th place to 23 points and still in 7th place. Chesham United remain in 9th, 7th clear of the relegation zone. And that's it, really. In, in South East, there was just the one game. South West then, also just the one game. Bridgewater United against Bournemouth postponed. Selsey against Exeter City postponed. So Maidenhead United won. Southampton Women's won is the only uh, game to discuss. And both of the goals came pretty early on. Megan Wood in the 19th minute. Uh, Isabel Stockton for Maidenhead in the 22nd minute. Uh, and that is how the game finished. So what that means for the Division 1 South West table is again no movement. Uh, Maidenhead United uh, remain in 8th uh, and they are still 9 points clear of the relegation zone. Southampton Women's there still in the relegation zone. Um, but now just 1 point behind Torquay with 2 games in hand. Um, that'll do it then for all of the uh, results from the past seven days. Let's now take a look at the fixtures and this will take a little bit of time because it is the final round of midweek fixtures. There's the odd midweek game here and there from teams having to squeeze games in but this is the final scheduled uh, midweek of the FAWNL season so plenty to go through we're going to start though and it's coming off the back of a full program uh, in the FAWNL this weekend so next week the uh, divisions may look very very different Northern Premier Division then this weekend filed in 12th against Stoke in 7th Derby in 6th against Halifax who are 9th 
Huddersfield Town in 11th against Liverpool Feds, who are 4th. Stourbridge hosts Newcastle United, that's 10th against 1st. Uh, Wolves in 5th host Nottingham Forest, who are 2nd. And West Bromwich Albion, who are down in 8th, host Burnley, who are 3rd. That game is at the Hawthorns uh, with a 2-15 kickoff. Then... If we look at midweek, uh, there are some midweek games on Thursday. They will, of course, be covered on next week's show. Uh, Stoke City against Derby County is a mid-table game, 7th against 6th. And West Bromwich Albion against Stourbridge, 8th against 10th. So with a full programme this weekend and games, uh, these two games coming up next week could be a very different looking uh, Northern Premier Division table. Um, for the Southern Premier Division, big games down towards the bottom. Cardiff City against Plymouth Argyle. Now, it is possible, and I emphasise possible, that London Bees are relegated by the time we do this show next week. Uh, Cardiff City against Plymouth Argyle. If Cardiff City... Sorry, if Plymouth Argyle are to win this game, that will pull themselves away from London Bees. London Bees themselves in 12th have got Cheltenham Town, who are 10th. If Cheltenham win that game, that would pull themselves away from London Bees as well. Then the only team that London Bees would be able to catch is Billericay Town, who are away at Rugby Borough. Um, but realistically, a point for Billericay Town uh, with a London Bees loss would mean the gap is 15 points, five games to play and a goal difference uh, that they'd have to make up of well over 40. Um, Portsmouth against Ipswich Town, first against fourth. Big game towards the top there. Chatham Town in 11th against Milton Keynes Dons in sixth. Hashtag United against Oxford United, second against fifth. So important games towards the top and the bottom of the Southern Premier Division this weekend. And then midweek, uh, hashtag United against Billericay Town, second against eighth. London Bees against Chatham Town is a relegation six-pointer, 12th against 11th. And Rugby Borough against Milton Keynes Dons uh, is, uh, that is third against sixth. So um, with two games this uh, week for London Bees, by the time we get to next week's show, they will only have four games remaining. They will have to have picked up something because they're currently 13 points away. So, and if, if they lose to, to Cheltenham, even a draw against Cheltenham doesn't really cut it. Um, but uh, it seems almost inevitable and they're just going to be hanging on really um, for another couple of weeks. Um Right, Division 1, Midlands, uh, Lincoln City against Sutton Coldfield Town. We're back again to Sunday, as I said, full programme. Uh, so Lincoln City in 8th against Sutton Coldfield Town in 6th. Loughborough Lightning, top of the table at the moment, take on bottom of the table, Leafield Athletic. Northampton Town in 5th, Sporting Cowser in 3rd. Uh, Sheffield at home against Peterborough United. We'll see if the pitch can uh, hold up to that one. Solihull Moors against Notts County, 7th against 10th. And Leek Town against Boldmere St. Michael's, 9th against 2nd. They're moving into midweek. Boldmere St. Michael's, who are currently 2nd, take on Northampton Town, 5th. Peterborough United in 4th against Notts County in 10th. And Sporting Cows against Sutton Coldfield Town, 3rd against 6th. So feel like this could be... With so many teams still involved in a relegation battle and a promotion battle, could be a crucial week because teams are playing each other. Those gaps could easily stretch. And uh, this late stage in the season, uh, having a gap stretching out that much uh, could be uh, decisive uh, for uh, all of the sides involved. Uh, Division 1 North then, more uh, big stadium games coming in Division 1 North. Uh, we're going to start then with Sunday, Chester Street Town against Chorley, 10th against 9th, big important game down towards the bottom. Durham Sestra in 2nd against York City who are 11th, tough game there for York. Leeds United in 5th, Hull City in 3rd um, at the uh, Bannister Prentice Stadium there, so again... Two teams still 
Hull City in particular, obviously, with a big uh, hope of getting themselves promoted. Leeds United very much on the periphery, but could still go on a run and get themselves somewhat into the conversation, particularly with a win over Hull uh, this weekend. Um, at the Riverside, Middlesbrough against Doncaster Rovers, Bells. Top of the table, Middlesbrough against seventh place, Doncaster Rovers, Bells. Again, at the men's stadium there. Norton starts in Ancients against Barnsley, 8th against 4th. And then also at the Men's Stadium at Edgeley Park, Stockport County against FC United of Manchester. That is 6th against 12th. Uh, moving then into midweek, four games to talk about here. Uh, Stockport County against Chorley, 6th against 9th. Uh, Barnsley against Hull City. Uh, that is uh, fourth against third. Again, really important week for Hull. They've got fourth and fifth this week. Chester Street Town against Middlesbrough, tenth against first. And York City at the York Community Stadium uh, against Doncaster Rovers Bells, eleventh against seventh. Uh, moving through then into uh, Division One South East and more games at uh, the Men's Stadium. Uh, AFC Sudbury against Actonians, 10th against 7th. Uh, AFC Sudbury just one point above the drop zone. Chesham United against Ashford Town, 9th against 5th. Haywood Heath Town against Cambridge City, 12th against 11th. Huge game down towards the bottom there, particularly if Actonians beat AFC Sudbury, because a win for either of those two sides, anything but a draw, will see the winner go out of the relegation zone, providing that Sudbury lose. Uh, London Seaward against AFC Wimbledon, 8th against 1st. Uh, Norwich City against Worthing at the Nest. That is uh, second against third. Big game towards the top. Worthing probably too far back to catch Wimbledon. Norwich must win this game um, to keep up their title challenge. And then at Loftus Road, Queen's Park Rangers against Cambridge United. Fourth against sixth. Both of those sides too far back. It's a case really of playing out the season for them and uh, seeing what they can do next year. Um, and then finally then Division 1 South West. Sorry, not Division 1 South West. We've got uh, midweek games in Division 1 South East to talk about first. AFC Sudbury against Cambridge City. That's going to be another huge game towards the bottom of the table. So this could be a pivotal week for Cambridge City. If they could get, for example, six points from those two games, that would put them on 12 and be... You know, getting on for five points clear of the relegation zone could be crucial. Could they do a similar thing to what Chesham United did back in January and to what Cardiff City did um, in February um, in the Southern Premier Division? Uh, and AFC Wimbledon against Hayward Steve Town is first against 12th at the moment. Going to be a very difficult game for Haywards, that one. Um, right then, into uh, Division 1 South West then. And another game at the men's stadium. Uh, AFC Bournemouth against Abingdon United. Uh, obviously Bournemouth in second at the moment. Abingdon United down in fifth. Bridgewater United against Swindon Town. Seventh against third. Then at St. James's Park, Exeter City against Maidenhead United. First against eighth. Keensham Town against Moneyfield. Sixth against fourth. Southampton Women's against Portishead Town. Is 11th against 9th. Big game towards the bottom there. And then Celsi in 12th against Torquay United in 10th. So Celsi have lost every single game so far this season. If you kind of take the assumption that Torquay United will win, even if it's not a convincing win, uh, that puts them on, on 10 points. And then if Southampton Women's can't get anything from that game against Portishead, it just then makes it a two-game gap, and it's uh, slightly more challenging for Southampton women's. Then, uh, in midweek, Moneyfields against Bournemouth, fourth against second. Main Hedge United against Swindon Town is eighth against third. And Portishead Town against Exeter City, ninth against first. Um, those are the fixtures then coming up between uh, now and the end of play on Wednesday. Obviously, any games that are in on Thursday, I will cover on Thursday's show uh, next week. So plenty of games taking place at uh, the men's stadiums. If you're going to uh, one of those, have a super time. But of course... Wherever you are going to go and watch your FAWNL football next weekend, uh, your teams will be grateful of your support. This really is the crucial time 
of the season. Give it a couple of weeks uh, and the end of the season will be on the big whiteboard and we'll start having a look at who plays who in the run-ins and who is likely to uh, find themselves promoted and relegated um, from the FAWNL. There are a couple of teams um, in Tier 5 who are on the verge of getting promoted into the FAWNL. They are pretty much uh, champions elect. I think Bristol Rovers uh, from memory is one of them, but I'll go through them all very quickly as the show has been a little short um, this week. So, um, still plenty to play for in uh, the East Midlands Regional, but uh, Lincoln United uh, well out in front. Could we have Lincoln United and Lincoln City in Division 1 Midlands next season? Um, in the West Midlands Regional, uh, it's Worcester City who are eight points out in front. There are four, well, sorry, there are five or six games left to go. They are eight points clear. They are looking very strong for promotion into Division 1 Midlands uh, next season. If we move north, um, into uh, the northeastern region, uh, then it is um, Bradford City who are currently top of the table, but they have played four games more than uh, Wall's End BC and they're on the same number of points. They've also played two more than Barnsley and three more than Sunderland, and just one point separates the top four um, in the uh, North East Regional, so loads uh, still to play for there. They have got uh, to get to 22, so plenty of football still to be played in the North East. In the North West, um, it is Cheadle Town Stingers, who are top and champions elect. Um, with just four games to go, they are 12 points clear and have a better goal difference than Blackburn Community, who are the only team uh, that can catch them. Uh, Cheadle Town currently have no further games planned. Uh, Blackburn Community have a game this weekend which they must win and win heavily to keep the title race alive. But Cheadle Town need one point from their final four games. Um, so that would be into Division 1 uh, North. Uh, if we look for going into Division 1 South East and we start with the Eastern Region Women's Football League, uh, Rail Bedford, seven points clear and with three games in hand over Harringay Borough, um, but they have still got nine games to play. So there's still you know, a decent amount that could happen um, in the Eastern Region. In the London and South East Region, uh, top of the table at the moment are Dartford, four points clear of Fulham. Uh, Dorich Hamlet though are nine points behind but they do have two games in hand again they've got to play uh, between like six and eight games to go um, so it'll probably be a while before we know uh, who's going up there and then finally if we move into South West uh, then you uh, look at Bristol Rovers again champions elect nine points clear um, of Sherbourne Town uh, with a goal difference that's 24 better and Sherbourne Town with uh, three games to play. They play this weekend against Bishops Lydyard, um, but Bristol Rovers with only two games to go. They're in cup action this weekend. Um, so if Sherbourne Town were to win this weekend, then they would have to wait until the 24th of March to uh, you know, actually have it confirmed. But Bristol Rovers more likely than not going to be in Division 1 South West next season. And finally, in the uh, Tier 5, this is the Southern Region. Ascot United, six points clear of Bournemouth Sports, but Bournemouth Sports with two in hand. Uh, Ascot United, three games left to play. Bournemouth Sports, five games left to play. They are the only two uh, that can uh, be promoted, if my maths is correct. I mean, technically, Wood, Woodley United down in fourth with their uh, five games left to play. If they win them all, they could get to 33, but it's highly unlikely um, that uh, they will be the ones getting promoted. So it's between Ascot United and Bournemouth Sports. 
Um, so, yeah, it's kind of between two or three teams in most of those leagues in, in Tier 5, but I sense we're going to have to wait another month or so uh, until we know for sure um, the majority of the teams coming up into the FA WNL. Um, right then, next week, uh, we've got a lot of results to go through. The tables could look very, very different, but the only thing that is certain is I'll be here at 6pm to bring you up to speed with all the very latest from the FA WNL. Keep supporting your local women's football team. As I said, if you're going uh, to a game at a big stadium, then enjoy it. But for wherever you're watching your football uh, this weekend, I'm sure you will have a super time. And I'll be back next Thursday at 6pm with all the very latest. But for now, goodbye. <laughs>